<sighs> oh, great, it's windy enough today. You can hear the waves crashing on Kapuna Cove along the Pacific Coast here. I'm close to the ocean, you know why? Kind of a nice background sound, soothing. Love to hear those waves. Uh, well, in India, Eddie travels on the Indian railway uh, system. The largest in the world. Mm -hmm. Built by the British. He usually rides third class with no ticket. Mm -mm. Often he eats and sleeps in railway stations. Or free, sleeping, third class waiting rooms. Costs nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, from Bombay, travels south through uh, Badami, <laughs> Mysore City. How would they make that great incense? Huh? Uh, all those old Dravidian temples, you know, they're so tall. You know, girls. Uh, Balur, uh, Halabad, and uh, Bangalore, Kuching, on the way to Cape Comorin, the very southern tip of India, sacred spot. Yeah. He sweeps north again, uh, pausing in Madurai and Tirichiapali. Gorgeous. Uh, temples in both those places. Well, he's on the train near Malihali Balipuram, uh, north of Pondicherry and the Sri Aurobindo Ashram. Somebody on the train asks him, uh, how are you finding India? And he answers gratefully, you know, I, I like India more every day. I like the people, classical music, uh, the food, the warm weather, in the south, and uh, so much more. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling truly ecstatic. Oh, material epiphany already, uh, it, it sinks in. Uh, he can live in India for the rest of his life on just the bank interests of uh, the divorce settlement. He never has to work again. <laughs> this gold nugget of financial independence, yeah, ensures his personal freedom and independence for the rest of his life. From Madras, yeah, travels north by train to uh, Banishwar, and he meets some freaks there in the railway station. They get him curious and enthralled about fabulous Nepal and the Himalayas. Uh, he had never heard of Kathmandu ever. Uh, well, his fellow travelers say, look, they're going through Calcutta. Pick up a Nepali visa there. Mm. Yeah, he does. And uh, soon he's up in Kathmandu, which seems like a quaint village. Uh, in the mountains after his grand tour of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, few private cars, uh, no television, uh, the medieval life expectancy sucks. Yeah, Hindu king reigns and uh, on this Himalayan landscape uh, between Tibet and India. Well, oh, Kathmandu, whew, so early days, huh? Uh, Eddie befriends the uh, few freaks in Kathmandu. In fact, <laughs> there's only Steve, Usha, <laughs> Dahl, and Susie, and he knows Susie from Copenhagen. So, uh, <laughs> 1965, yeah. The whole, the, these few travelers are the whole scene in Nepal, yeah. Mm small freak tribe, hangs out uh, in the Globe Cafe, sharing great food and smoking ganja, <laughs> hashish. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, just to make that point, uh, since the dawn of time, the mountain people in the Himalayas have never <laughs> even imagined uh, making hashish and marijuana against the law. Uh, only an insane, fearful, and withering society would be that fucking stupid. 
Uh, well, Eddie has floated through a mystical portal into the benevolent cafe society of hashish smokers. Nineteen sixty-five, so he adores it. Mingling with hip Western freaks, uh, you know, the fish who swam away to the roof of the world. Eddie deeply bonds with these uh, brave young travelers. And he spends the rest of his life amongst them. Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> from our point of view, Eddie uh, hmm, is the hip father we've always dreamed of. Uh, he's younger than my parents. Uh, and we are his younger uh, love children. We're innocent, <laughs> vulnerable, disoriented, uh, exploited. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the cool, inner realized papa. Papa for us. Uh, we've always, uh, you know, so he's got already, Eddie's already got a, a lifetime of gritty street spirit uh, experience under his belt. And, uh, so for him, Eddie takes confident pleasure with no extra sweat, guiding and protecting the world travelers gathering around him. Day in life. Hmm. The day in the life of Eight Finger Eddie in 1965, uh, he lingers long in bed. <laughs> Call up here and name away. Uh, he has breakfast in a small chai shop. Walks over to the American Library because it's heated. Yeah. And uh, reads until about noon. Has a simple lunch. Uh, and uh, walks around the Warren of Shaw's <laughs> medieval temples in the afternoon. So. He chills in the Globe Cafe more and more. Well, in the Globe, he talks to two Western travelers whose guru, Mayor Baba, told them they should never go back to India. His response is like, I would never allow anybody to tell me what to do. His hardcore Armenian and Yankee bred individualism crashing head on with the Indian guru sensation enveloping the Western hippie scene. <laughs>